Today on Toy Habits, we are taking a look at all things Scarlet. The main review will be focused on her Redeco Field Variant version, and we will also take a look at her first release, and we'll be comparing her to her vintage self from 1982. And if that's not enough, Brandon Bomber shares his modified version of G.I. Joe's Intelligence Officer. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to Toy Habits, and today we are reviewing the G.I. Joe Classified Series Field Variant Redeco version of Scarlet, along with comparing her to her version 1 release and her vintage self from 1982. And let's start off like we usually do by looking at Scarlet in her G.I. Joe Classified window display, and you can see all of the accessories that comes with her, so let's zero in on the box art. And on the front of the box, we see an amazing rendering of Scarlet. She's looking off into the distance and she's not looking directly at you, but she's looking to the side of you. And it almost looks like she's a little bit proud of herself. It looks like there's something that has blown up behind her and possibly she set it off. She is the intelligence officer, so she might have detonated some Cobra stronghold and she's feeling mighty proud of herself. I do love this animation style. It looks more like a watercolor than anything else. And the portrait looks amazing. I love the way her hair is drawn and I love the way that her ponytail is coming out from over her shoulder there. Now, I think the side of the box pays homage to her story from her file card from 1982. And if you read her file card, Scarlett's father and three brothers were martial arts instructors and she began her training at age nine and was awarded her first black belt at age 15. So you see a picture of her with her black belt. She also graduated in advanced infantry training and ranger school. So I think this is paying homage to that particular story of Scarlet. She's also trained in the use of the power crossbow. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the box, you see her parachuting in and looks like she had just kicked down an alley viper. And this is paying homage to her special air service school. All right, so let's take a look at what Scarlet is known for. She is a level four intelligence officer. She is skilled at level two in arrow weapons. She is a level three martial artist and another nod to her vintage file card. Her level four designation is classified. Now that Scarlet's out of the box, let's first take a look at her head sculpt and her head sculpt is done very well. Her lips look very natural. Her facial features also look natural and they did make her eyes a lot bigger than a lot of the other classified figures that I've seen. And her irises just fill in her eyes, which gives her a very interesting and very very innocent look for an intelligence officer. And I brought in Duke just for a comparison. So as you can see, Duke's irises don't fill up the bulk of his eye versus Scarlet's. They fill up a lot more of the eye and they extend almost to the ends of her eyes. With respect to her hair sculpt, I do like the way that her hair hangs down over her eyes and they actually gave her a highlight as you've seen on the back of the G.I. Joe classified packaging. They also gave her some earrings and the ears look very natural and very well detailed here. Her hair sculpt looks awesome. They gave her a layered and textured look and you can kind of see the chunks of hair that don't really fit into her ponytail and I really like the way that they did her ponytail detail here with you can see some of the strands of hair coming out. Out of it instead of it looking like just one solid piece and they also gave her some highlights in her hair down here as well. One thing I will mention about her head sculpt and it's about the way that her head fits on her neck and I love the way that they put some black clothing all the way up to her neck because if they left that flesh colored she would look like a giraffe so it kind of gives the illusion that she has a normal size neck. And moving down to her torso, she does have a comm link on her right shoulder, and I do love the little square detail that they've added here. It just makes the piece look a lot more interesting. She also has a bandolier that's removable. It moves up and down, and it also attaches to her quiver in the back. And one of the cooler aspects of this bandolier is that she can actually hold a knife in this sheath up here. And I love the red detail. It just helps differentiate the sheath from the bandolier. And I love the riveting detail that they put on it here. And Scarlett's outfit is pretty basic. It's just an olive green paint app with some yellow paint app. And I do like the lines running down the sides of her chest as well as her black torso. And I do like the lines that they've given it here. And if you can 
really look really closely, there is some texturing detail here. So they provided some fits and finishes on her torso to help differentiate her waist from her upper torso. And if you move her bandolier out of the way, you can see some of the sculpting detail and color differentiation that they put on her front chest piece here. You can also see some of the texturing that lies underneath the armor, which is like having a piece of clothing underneath the armor. And moving her around to the back, you can get a closer look at that quiver and backpack assembly. And it's actually a sheath that holds her other knives, which we'll take a look at when we look at her accessories. But you can see the quiver detail and the arrow detail that they have on this particular backpack and assembly. And I do like the way that it's layered on top of each other. So we have the sheath for these knives as well as the quiver that's running on top of the backpack. And if you also take a look at the strap detail here, it looks like it's leather. So I think they really did a good job on this piece overall. And moving that backpack assembly out of the way, you can get a look at her back. So that bandolier assembly is removable. You just pop Scarlet's head off and just manipulate her arm and that comes right off. So you can see the detail that they have in the back here with the varying colors of yellow and olive green. There's also a strap that goes across the back where her backpack lies. And if you take a closer look at her neck detail and her shoulder detail, you can see some strap detail coming over her shoulder as well as some texturing that they put on her clothing. I do also like the black stripes that they've put down here because it makes it look like her armor is two separate pieces and it's kind of joining at the side here. And you can kind of imagine those two pieces coming together. And moving down to Scarlet's arms, they are asymmetrical. So let's take a look at the right arm first. And I really like the way that they've done the glove detail here. We have a yellow and brown paint scheme and I love the forearm armor. It's very simple, but it works. And that brown detail just gives it a more sleeker look. She also has a yellow elbow pad and some detailing that you'll find on the front and also on the back of her arm here, which just gives the arms a little bit more depth and dimension. And taking a look at the left arm, we can see some of the differences here. She has the throwing stars on her forearm armor, which look really cool. And she also has a piece of shoulder armor that's a red piece that is molded and attached to her arm. And I think the red in the shoulder armor really helps set this arm apart and really differentiates it from the other one and just gives her a more interesting look overall. And next, let's take a look at her belt. And I do love the buckle detail here. And I love that they've given it more of that gold color to help set it off and differentiate it from the rest of the belt because it would have been pretty boring if she just had a black belt. It is movable and removable and it does have some pouches. And I do like the little hip pack that she has here. It has some cool zipper detail if you can see. And if you move the figure around to the back, you can also see the strap detail that they have here. And it has that crackled leathery look. And while we're back here, we can take a look at Scarlett's hindquarters. And I like the way that this piece is molded just to give that hindquarter some more definition and some more shape. Uh, she does have a couple pockets on the back and there is some texturing on her pant detail here. And moving down to her thighs, you do see some horizontal lines that are running through the olive paint app. And she does have a really cool effect with this crimson red paint detail on the side of her pants. And I do like the way that they added some sculpting detail to kind of help frame her thighs and make them a little bit more interesting. And finally, let's take a look at her knee armor, shin armor, and boots. So let's first start with the knee armor. And I do love the way that they varied the paint app here with the brown and the yellow paint scheme. They also have given her knee pads some sculpting detail that you can see here. And moving down to the shin armor, I think this is the most interesting shin armor that I've seen. And I do like the way that the browns kind of overwhelm the yellows and it just helps break up a lot of the yellow that you see in the figure. And it ties in with the other paint app on the figure. So if we turn the boots around to the side, you can take a look at the side of the shin armor. And I do like all the sculpting detail here. It kind of looks like she has little jetpack rockets strapped to her shin armor here and I do like the sculpting that they put here. They've also put some black paint app to vary it a little bit and I think this shin armor just looks really really cool. And moving down to the shoes, the shoes were given a brown and black 
paint app that kind of bleeds up into her ankle and calf here and you can see the sculpting detail that they did put on the ankle and she's given more of like a loafer like shoe and I do like the way that the yellows kind of play off the blacks and the browns here. And since I have both her version 1 and version 2 figures, let's take a look at some of the similarities and differences here and we can start by looking at their head sculpts. They actually look like two totally different figures with respect to the head sculpt, so I'm not sure if they were actually using this as a repaint, but I do see some similarities and differences here, but a lot more differences. You can see that in the version 1 Scarlet, the irises look a lot smaller to me, and in the version 2 Scarlet, the eyes and the irises just look a lot more filled out and pronounced. You can also see some freckle detail here, which looks absent in the version 2 of Scarlet, and they're given two totally different paint schemes on their hair. So the first version has a lighter orange, and the version 2 Scarlet has a darker orange, and you can also see that the hair sculpts are done differently. So the version 2 Scarlet, the hair hangs over her eyes with the version 1 Scarlet. It's just kind of laying off to the side above her eyes, so you can see her eyes a lot more. And moving down to her torso and her arms, you can really see the differences here where version 1 has more of a darker blue paint app for her clothing that goes underneath her armor. And a lot of the differences lie in the colors and the paint app here. So the first version of Scarlet has more of a bronze paint app versus the second version of Scarlet has more of a darker brown. And that's pretty much the same with her forearm armor where she's given some blue detail here and the stars are the same but there's just varying differences in the paint app so again we have this bronze color on her forearm armor and her glove and then we also have some darker brown detail on her glove in version 2. And moving down to her legs, you can also see the differences in paint app here. And I think this kind of looks like a darker version of that mud color that comes on the deluxe version of Snake Eyes. And you can also see that they've added some blue detail in the notching here in her knee pad, which I don't know. I'm kind of torn. I like the blue, but I also do like the more subdued look of the knee armor on version 2. And finally, moving down to her boots and shin armor, you can see the red accents that they've given Scarlet on version 1, as well as that blue detail on her shin armor that bleeds all the way up to her knee pad, and that is not present on the version 2 figure, and I think the only difference here is that they've added some blue in the little venting here on the side of her shin armor. And popping the bandoliers off, you can take a look at the differences in the back here. And this bronze color, now that I take a closer look at it, has more of a shine to it than this kind of matte brown that they used on version 2. And you can also see the darker blue that they've used on version 1 versus the black suit that they put on Scarlet on version 2. And the last thing we'll take a look at here are the strap detail that you'll find underneath Scarlet's arms and on the side of her armor. And I think the bronze bronze color on version 1 just sets off those black strips a little better versus the more darker brown that they've given the paint app on version 2. And speaking of paint app, we have a special treat for everyone. Brandon Bomber is back with another mod and if the red paint on the side of her legs is too much or is bugging you, Brandon has a mod for you but be forewarned and please proceed with caution as it involves paint removal. I've had the pleasure of speaking to Brandon more about this and he said, I've removed paint from figures a hundred times and I've never had to work so hard before. A combination of acetone, 91% isopropyl alcohol, pink soap, and a lot of scrubbing and sanding. It turned out great, but you can achieve a similar effect if you paint over it. So again, we have a Burger King situation here where you can have it your way, baby. I think this paint mod makes the figure look less busy and it gives a more subdued look to Scarlet, which I absolutely love. Thanks again, Brandon, for sending me your work and always happy to feature it. Now back to the review. And since I had both figures and I had the bandoliers off, I did do a head swap on these figures. So I'm not sure which I like better. I think I might like different aspects of the head sculpts differently. So I do love the way that the eyes are done on the version 2 head sculpt versus the way that the eyes are done on version 1. But I do love the freckle detail and I think both heads look great on these figures. 
The great thing about this, if you have both figures, you can have it your way, baby. You can display both however you like it. And Scarlet does come with a lot of accessories and she is knifed up in this version. So let's first take a look at those. And looking closer at these three knives, they are two of the same knife, which I think is a cool effect when they are both in the sheath on her backpack. And she also has a knife that can go in her bandolier. And I think they did a great job just on the little sculpting details that they have here. They have a little notch out of the handle and the handle detail is cool on all of these knives. The blade detail is also cool. They've given it more of an angled look and they've given some jagged detail on her knives that go in the sheath on her backpack. And since I popped this off already, let's take a closer look at her quiver and sheath that she has in her bandolier backpack assembly a little closer. So she does have some arrows that feed up into the backpack here and she does have space for the knives that slot into the sheath. So we'll take a look at that in a bit and you can just take a look at the total package of the bandolier and the sheath assembly here. And I've went ahead and put all the knives in and they look pretty cool when everything is assembled. I do love the way that this sheath is upside down and Scarlet can just grab a hold of it with her hand really quickly and just stab the heck out of some Culber soldier that's after her. And finally let's take a look at her crossbow and gun and how they fit together. So I actually really like that these are I actually really like that these are two pieces and you can use the gun without the crossbow as just a normal weapon. There is a notch taken out of it and you can see how these two pieces fit together. So all you do is you just pop the crossbow on top and you can also fit this little piece over the notch here just to complete the look of the crossbow. And I think it actually looks really, really cool. And on to my favorite part of these reviews, the comparison of the G.I. Joe classified figure versus the vintage figure from 1982. And just taking a look, there's not a lot of obvious similarities here, but we do have the red shoulder deco on both of these figures. And if you look closely, I think they tried to mimic that texturing that they put on the vintage figure and they tried to recreate that on the G.I. Joe classified figure, which I think is really cool. And there is a grenade that's attached to the vintage figure, but it is not present on the G.I. Joe classified figure. And I do like the way that they've tried to recreate the throwing stars on the sides of the forearm armor here. So the version one Scarlet from 1982 has a more traditional throwing star look that has a lot of spike detail to it and the G.I. Joe classified figure was given a more updated throwing star look. And the last difference I'm going to highlight is that there is a tool or a weapon that is packed on Scarlet's hindquarters in the vintage figure and I actually wish that they had put something like that on the hindquarters of the G.I. Joe classified figure as I think that would have been a great nod and just tie in the vintage figure with the brand new design. And here is Scarlet all geared up and she is articulated enough where you can kind of simulate her taking that knife out of her bandolier from her sheath. And I think she just looks really cool with all the knives that she has and just the total package of the way that the bandolier and quiver lay on her. And I just think this is a very cool way to display this figure. And here she is geared up holding her crossbow and I just think it looks amazing. I think they did a great job on the crossbow. So watch out, she is coming to get you. Well, maybe not you, but some unsuspecting Cobra Trooper found himself on the wrong end of Scarlet's blade. Well, that's a wrap on this Scarlet Palooza review and let us know what you think of all the figures. Do you have version one, the field variant redeco? Do you like Bomber's mod? We wanna hear it all. And thanks for tuning into Toy Habits. And if you haven't checked out our G.I. Joe classified series file card reveal, please do so as I will be creating a file card for Scarlet. So please subscribe so you don't miss out.